Hey everybody, this is a Jim at SP500Chart.com and we're going to take a look at the chart of Arena Farm. I can't talk. Arena Pharmaceuticals. After I remind you that uh, the website, should you decide to go there, in this video are for educational purposes only and nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research and make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I am not a licensed financial professional. I'm just a guy who draws lines on charts. And in the case of Arena Pharmaceuticals, I'm not in the pharmaceutical business, I'm not a doctor, and I'm not a scientist. I'm still just a guy who draws lines on charts, but let's do it. The first thing I want to do is point out just, just a couple things that, that have taken place in arena that have worked out very well. The first is uh, back in early February, we were getting down into the into the high fives after being close to eight, and that seemed like a pretty drastic move. It was all taking place in a descending channel. We broke through the bottom support line of that channel, which is often your first sign that that the move is about ready to be over. Just like when you're in an ascending channel, if you blow out over that top resistance line, that's often a sign that that upwards move is about ready to be over. Why? Because in the case of going up, that is irrational exuberance. That is people piling in. And that can happen with, with good reason, okay? It can happen that there's a fundamental reason why that may take place, but it still weakens the stock technically. So we uh, we were had just the opposite of that happening in a descending channel, selling off at a at a good at a solid rate of selling, and then all of a sudden it just it just forget it, I'm out, and that's when we got down to 575 the first time. When we got to it the second time, we started making a series of patterns that were uh, all inverted head and shoulders patterns. And very interestingly, these were nested. If you look here, I've drawn an oval. That little thing right there is a very small inverted head and shoulders pattern. If you look a little bit extended, if in other words, if we'd make that oval now go here, this too is a very small inverted head and shoulders pattern. Then if we extend this just a little bit more, this is an inverted head and shoulders pattern. And you can see once we got over that neckline, that was the signal that this move down was done. Now, what I had noticed at the same time is that if we take this oval and make it a good bit larger, what do we have here? Well, to my eyes, this looks like an even larger head and sh inverted head and shoulders pattern. And if we measure the depth of the head from the neckline, which is what you do to get your target, this pattern has a target of about eight and a quarter. Okay, so that's that's the first thing I want to show you. But there's something else uh, I, I want you to see as well. Let's back out to a 30-minute chart. And now let's look at this line. If we make our 8 and a quarter up here, we will also be looking at an even larger head and shoulders continuation pattern right here. I'm calling this the left shoulder. I'm calling this the head and the right shoulder. So if we get up to eight and a quarter, we will also take out this line of resistance, which measures two about, depending on when it happens, would measure to about somewhere in the 930s, nine and a quarter, I think I called it at one point. But wait, there's more. If we back out, and I think we may actually have to go uh, back out to a daily chart here. 
what we've discussed has been everything that's taken place just within this uh, oval. <clears throat> if we take a larger view of the chart, then the argument could be made that everything that happened since July 1st, approximately, until... And there's a couple of interpretations of this, but I'm going to say July 1st until the middle of January. Let me get this thing moved just right. Its self is, a, is an inverted head and shoulders. This would be the neckline to that pattern. Now, we did briefly get underneath this uh, this neckline but then recovered okay additionally if you look at the last little pattern by the way the target from this pattern with if you interpret it as this being the neckline is where I'm getting my uh, uh, 1050 target and again you measure the depth of the head and then you add it on to where it broke out and it's actually higher than 1050, but I'm, I'm giving it a little, I'm, I'm being conservative. There is another interpretation that a person could reasonably make. And that is that what has taken place since July and still has not completed is an even larger pattern with a neckline currently at about 8. And if that is the correct interpretation, then we could be looking at a target close to 15. Now, you might say, yeah, well, that really doesn't look like a good spot for a head and shoulders. Well, you know, they can appear as, re as reversals, in which case, you know, we were up over 13, and then we sold down, went sideways, and then we came down into this big dip. And that would be a, an okay spot for an inverted head and shoulders to start to show up. Um, I, I cannot tell you whether I like this. I sort of like this neckline better. Uh, one reason I like it better is, is we're over it. So this, this would be what you would call a confirmed pattern. But this would be a more impressive pattern if this is the one that ends up uh, being the case. The other thing someone could look at this chart and again this is all predicated upon getting over eight to a solid degree is that this could be a a cup and a handle possible okay to make a long story short there are numerous signs where this chart is littered with patterns that that are bullish especially when we look inside this little oval right here and these patterns in here alone should be sufficient to get us um, to get us up into the mid nines and I think if we do that then we'll see some of the energy that's been stored in this larger pattern I think we'll see that move to at least come up and, and challenge um, the, the low teens or, or 12. We do have a, a, a resistance line at 12. Finally, I want to show you what took place over the past week. Um, you know, we had that day where we opened up uh, l last Friday, where, where we opened uh, around 735 and then just had a nasty day. As, as it looked like we may be ready to really get up and do some good, we ended the day down significantly, and that was very frustrating. A couple things took place. The, uh, th th that actually was on Friday. The, the trading that took place on Monday and Friday, for the most part, followed a descending wedge pattern. We sort of got out over that wedge, back tested it once, back tested it, back tested it again um, late on Wednesday. Thursday started to recover. And you can see that um, 
that I that I kept these lines on the chart. I also uh, had a a channel right here that was kind of a secondary pattern within that three days of trading. Got up over that on Thursday, back tested it twice. Then. Uh, when we started trading uh, on Friday morning, actually Thursday afternoon, after the markets closed, I, I made note that this looked like a little inverted head and shoulders pattern. And at the time, I was, I was being very conservative with the measurement of it. I think I said in the forum that I was looking for a target of around 705. The target actually should be a little higher than that. We should be more like 710, 712. So there's another inverted head and shoulders pattern. If we look at a five minute chart, could we be seeing another inverted head and shoulders pattern that's very small? If so, <coughs> then a move on Monday, it would almost certainly take place on Monday. A move over seven on Monday should be sufficient to put the gears in motion to get us up to about 720 or at least the high 17s, which then gets us very close to another one of our necklines. So you can see how this is kind of exciting. There's that neckline right there of this larger inverted pattern that if it breaks out, in other words, if we get significantly over seven and a quarter, then we would be looking at, at a minimum move to about eight and a quarter. So guys, this is really cool. And don't tell me that you can't, that, that charting is of no value with, with Arena Pharmaceuticals. It is of immense value. So the guys, there's your video. Please remember who it's coming from, just a guy who draws lines on charts, but I think it sure would be cool to see these patterns play out. We've, we've seen a number of them work just right. We've even seen bearish patterns work out just right, even though I was on the wrong side of it. When we broke 750, we indeed did see the low fours, you know? So you can't ignore this stuff. At least, well, you can. Feel free to. By the way, if you're long and you don't like charts, fine. You're probably fine because uh, the fundamentals for Arena Pharmaceuticals seem immensely strong. So uh, anyway, take it for what it's worth. Thanks for watching. Take care.